Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is showing the results of these three intake manifolds that got tested on the Dino Mule. For those who are unfamiliar with the Dino Mule, let me explain. It's a 406 small block Chevy that I had built specifically to test different theories and ideas on the Dino. You know, they're probably never going a real car. I tested 12 manifolds. I'm breaking up the videos into doing three manifolds at a time so that you could see, um, so the videos aren't really so long. And they, all the three manifolds I put together, they kind of go together. You get to see the dyno results and everything else. However, I understand that seeing things on YouTube is much harder than if it was right in front of you. So I'm creating a book of all the dyno data that I have. It has a head, not only that, it has information on all the manifolds, it has information on the heads itself, the flow numbers, everything, every bit piece of data. That book, I'm going to collate and have a book, um, and I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it $10 more than what it cost me to make. Currently, I think it's about $15 bucks to have the book made, so it's going to be $25, bucks, probably 30 after shifting, maybe 35 if I add some more pages, which may happen anyway. So that's what you're looking for. If you're interested, just email me at winegardenerracing at gmail.com. I'll be happy to sell it to you. This way, you can actually look at the dyno numbers have them in front of you while you're watching me talk about this. It might make things easier. If you're like, oh, you're just trying to make money. Trust me, I'm not even, I could sell a thousand of the books and I'm still, well, I shouldn't say a thousand. I could sell 400 of the books and still wouldn't be half of what I spent. I'd have to sell about, I think about 800. Just, yeah, I have to sell 800 books to break even, just to break even. So from what this test, all these tests have cost me so far. So anyway, let's get to this. These are all dual planes. These are the three that got tested and I'll tell you about how they were tested and I'll tell you which ones they are. First off, this is, it says high tech and it says torque link. This manifold is no longer available. It's a dual plane. It's a very unique design as you can tell because it got these gigantic long runners. But if you notice, they are paired in pairs like so compared to the other dual planes where they kind of go in the opposite ways. So the idea looks amazing. You got nice tall runners, long runners. Of course, the bottom ones kind of come in at a lower angle. They're a little bit shorter, but still longer than these man uh, runners. It's got a nice notch out, a big old deep one. It's got dimples for those that love dimples. It's that manifold. It's no longer available. You can probably find them on eBay and stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, don't buy them. It was by far the worst. Then I have this one, and I'm going to have to do a little disclaimer here. AFR actually gave me this manifold. So I want to say this up front because I don't want you thinking you skewed the numbers because AFR gave it to you. I didn't, and they didn't ask me to either. They didn't say, hey, make it look good. They didn't do anything like that. They said, hey, I, I told them I was doing some testing. Would you mind donating? And they said, uh, yeah, sounds good. And so they did. So that's why this one's here, but I want to be up front with it. Um, this one, in case you're wondering how I got that, a customer abandoned that like 10 years ago. This one, uh, if you watch my previous videos, a guy named Tony, one of my customers is like, you know, I've got a dual plane you can use for this. And he gave me this so I can experiment with. So that's the reason why that one's here. So anyway, I just thought I'd be up front. This is the AFR. It's part number 4812. Um, it's got ribs on the floor and it's got a cutout divider, although not near as deep as the old torque link here. Um, it's got an air gap type design, so it's nice and cool. It's probably one of the more newer um, dual plate manifolds that are available for a small block Chevy. And that's it. This one's your old tried and true Elderbrock Performer RPM. It is not the air gap. And several people have asked, why didn't you do an air gap? Well, one, I didn't know I'd get enough time to finish what I already had as far as manifolds to test. And two, this one's going to be experimented on, so I wanted something that did not have a cutout divider. However, you're going to find out I had a problem with all this anyway. Now, on all these manifolds, they used a spacer. The problem was I didn't use the same spacer, and I'm going to tell you why. Initially, when I started testing, it was all on single planes. So I had a whole bunch of single planes that I was testing. And so what I did is I used this spacer, this four hole taper one. And I didn't think much about it. It's from AFR. It's a nice piece, it's probably one of the cheaper four holes. Anyway, so I just, I figured this would be the closest thing to run on this. And you're asking yourself, why did you run a spacer? One, I didn't have the studs, you know, to run this when the wind is right against it. And two, this was a major issue and I knew it would be, and I'd forgotten all about it until we we're getting ready to get on the dyno. These two manifolds have the same issue almost. See that plug? That's for vacuum for your, like your power brakes. If you look from the side, it's above the carb. So what happens is like it hits the actual carb. And I knew this and I just didn't think about it till we we're on the dyno. 
So when you put the carburetor flat on there, it will actually make contact. You need some kind of spacer, like a half inch, maybe three eighths. I didn't have a half inch or three eighths. The only thing I had was this one inch and the one inch open, which I'm about to show you in a minute. So I didn't think anything about it since we were already doing testing on all the other manifolds and they all had this on it, no big deal. I especially didn't think it would matter with the torque link being that the center is cut out so much. So I simply put this four hole on. I figured it's like, a, you know, it's pretty much an extension of the carburetor except for this cone. Put it on, ran that, put it on this, ran that, and then issue. See what the issue is right here? Bop, bop. The spacer, and this is the only one I've seen that way, the cone actually sticks out above the surface. So on these, because the plenum was cut out, that divider, you can kind of see, it had room to sit. And I did not even know that this stuck out, this cone in the center stuck out worse than the others until I went to go put it on this one. So because of this, on this one, what I did was I used uh, this same plastic, just a one inch open, you know, to clear, because I had it available, it was just put it on there. So I, that, that may have skewed the numbers, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, um, the best one, of course, was this, and it did really well. Second and worst period. There's nothing could fix that, I think. But I'm gonna retest this AFR exactly like it is, except for with the one inch open. And I should have done it at the dyno, I just didn't, because I, this, we dynoed this one first, and I had no idea about that cone until I went to here, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to go back, switch the manifold, go back to this one because we still had another six more to go. But I think the next time I go to the dyno, I'm going to take this and put this on it because I do think when you're going to see the numbers, and I'll show you in this video, I do think this might have had, you know, some influence on that because it's still got an area, but not near as much. And I don't know if the camera's going to capture it right. Um, so I think it might have actually hurt it having this. I'm on. I'm not almost positive, but I'm thinking it might happen. So when I go, I'm going to take it back. I'm not going to touch it at all. I'm just going to try it with a one inch. So anyway, um, that might actually bring it up. Did AFR ask me to do that? No, but I think that's what ended up hurting its results was this. So anyway, point is they all had a spacer on them because I had to really just for this plug, which wasn't a problem with the torque link. Um, didn't have a smaller one, otherwise I would have tried it. So anyway, I'm going to show you the dyno results and... You can see the difference. So let's get to those. Okay, here are the numbers. And by the way, these all these numbers are from that book I told about at the beginning of the, the video here. This is what it looks like. So it's actually all finished. I've been shipping out quite a few of these. You can tell it's got some uh, thickness to it. So it's $38 shipped. If you want it, just Weingartner Racing at gmail.com. But anyway, let's look at the numbers. So this is, we made more than one pull on each one of these manifolds. The idea is to get the water and the oil temperature at the same points for each one so that the numbers are fair. Because what you don't want is the water to be cool on one manifold but not the other one, then it skews the numbers higher. Or for the oil to be warm on one, then not the other. So all these runs are really, really close to the same water and oil temperature. So didn't change jetting on any of the carburetors. You'll see they're pretty close anyway. So this is the torque link. This is our first one. If you look, it's peak powers and 525 and that occurred at 6,000 RPM. Peak torque is 509 at 4,900. 
and you can tell it's 506. Now there is something I'm gonna show that's kind of weird um, in a minute on this, because these air fuel ratios, by the way, are calculated. What they do is that this, we have an O2 sensor that reads two, it's just not on this page. But um, these are the calculated ones. So what it does, it measures how much airflow we have, which is right here, and it measures how much fuel that flows through, and it says calculates the air fuel ratio, and you get this, um, which they're all really, really close. The jet change wouldn't have changed anything on any of them. It, I mean, anything, hardly, maybe one. But pay attention to this number, though. This intake manifold, the torque link, pulled 638 CFM. Okay, now let's go to the AFR real quick. So we'll just go to the next page. This is the AFR dual plane. Now, if you look at it, its peak power was 539 at 6100 RPM. So a little bit better there, and the torque was way up compared to that torque link at 522.7, which occurred at 5,000. You can tell the air fuel ratio is real close to the same. This one pulls 640 CFM, so two CFM more, but that's not even near, right? Now watch this. Let's go to our last one. This is the Elderbrock Performer RPM. It made 546 horse, sorry, 548 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. So it beat the other two by far. The torque came in at 524 uh, pounds of torque at 4,900 RPM. Notice the air filters are close, but check this out. It pulled in 628 CFM. This actually pulled in less CFM than the other two by about 20 CFM. So it's not like two CFM difference, it's about 20 CFM difference. Um, well, I should say about 10 CFM difference. So quite a bit uh, difference there but it still made more power. Now, the thing you're probably wanting to see most is, well, how do they compare? So um, this also is in the book. This might help you out quite a bit. This is a comparison as you have like through a line graph. So let me show you. You have your red line is this, it red line through the whole thing is the torque link. You have the black line, which is the dyno um, 4811 or 4812, that's the AFR. And the blue one is the perform RPM. This one, unlike the single planes, the single planes were pretty close together. These are not close together um, at all. And this one, I mean that torque link sucks. Because uh, I thought, well, at least the long runner, it should be. I expected the line, if it was gonna do anything, I expected it to be high here and then just start dropping off because of the runner link. So at least maybe it would have more torque when we rolled in at 4,200 RPM or something, or 4,400 RPM. It was never better. I mean, look, these two are all itself better. It only comes close to matching the AFR right through this point here. And that's the only time it gets close to either one of the other two manifolds. That's it. Look, it's not even close right there. And it's still better than the AFR is. So, not good. Um, then if we look at the, um, this is the AFR. You can tell it's up and then it matches the Performer RPM right here about peak torque. Pretty close. Uh, but then it starts dropping off. And the same thing kind of happens with power. Plus I have this little weird thing at the end that we tried several pulls backing it up to see if maybe it was just the servo and the dyno was causing that because if the servo kind of jerks it'll do that nope um it just does on the afr it never did on the others and of course you look at the last one the blue line that's your performer rpm with the open and you can tell it's it's besides right through here which is about peak torque so the afr matches it pretty much on peak torque it doesn't have it anywhere else the RPM is just better, which is um, an interesting revelation. Now, I told you at the beginning of this video, I am going to redo the 48 to, uh, this 4812 AFR. I'm going to put an open hole spacer on here because I'm curious if that, if we do that, what will happen? Will this come up? Will it start matching this? Or maybe it'll even beat that. I doubt it, but I think what's going to end up happening is this gap may get close here. It may close this gap. And then maybe it'll get closer up these points, but I don't think it's gonna beat the RPM. But that's why we test. Maybe I'll get surprised. Cause I mean, I'll be honest with you. I really thought the torque link was just gonna be a killer piece and it, it, it just wasn't. So that's the reason why a lot of times you, what you think and what you know aren't the same. So hopefully you guys got something out of that. And anyway, if you want this raw data, like I said, happy to sell this book to you, 38 bucks shipped to you. Now, this is not, the end of the testing for the dual planes. It is the end of the road for the torque link because that thing sucks so bad I'm not messing with it anymore. The AFR, like I said, is getting retested. We're just gonna do it open um, one inch with that. This is what's been done to the, air, air, the RPM. 
So what I did is I cut out the notch here and I actually cut it pretty wide. Usually they leave it narrow, but I was like, oh, I'll just go wider. I wanna see if it really makes a difference. Might as well go wide. Um, now I still have to blend this cause it's a sharp edge from where the end mill left it. So I'm gonna round that, round that. And that's all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try it again, see what happens. The next time we go back, so this will be one time. After that, I'm gonna do one more, one more testing with manifolds with this head combination. I'm gonna start switching the heads, but so this one's the next one. After that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it all the way down, and then I'm gonna try doing anything I can to improve the manifold with exception of port matching. And we'll see what this dual plane can do. What I didn't print off, and I should have, and it, and I will print, have them printed off. It's not even in this book. It'll probably, if you bought this book and you want the sheet, I will try to email it to you. But what I should have done, and I have now, is I created a graph of the best dual plane, which would be this deal, which is the blue line. And then I had it line up with the best um, of each category of single plane. So I had the best of the, you know, the first three that I did, which would be the Brodex BM1000, then also the 2892, which is the best of, best of the higher ones, and then the best of the Hurricanes, to see how it compares. And I'll tell you right off, and I don't have it in front of me, but, that graph, this from, really it's here, from about here this way, that's the only spot the RPM's any better than the others ever. So from like 46, actually like right here, 46 if I remember right, down, this one, the, the dual plane's better. No other spot is it better. So from 4600 RPM down, the dual plane's better. Single planes are better from that point on. I forgot to include that in this book, but, um, if you've already bought a book, I've got your names written down. I'll, you can just say, hey, I'd like to have you email me that, and I'll send it as an attachment. It's not a big deal. Anyway, on the version two book, so eventually I'm going to gather data again from another dyno test. Actually, probably two dyno tests I'm put together for another book. I'll include that chart with it. So anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. The next video, which will be um, next Sunday, will be comparing the three hurricanes. And I'm also going to talk about this weird tube thing that I did and that if you've been paying attention to the series, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about to see if it did anything because that was tested on version three of the hurricane. So that's next Sunday. Um, maybe you'll have a, a video on Wednesday and it'll probably be of the 565 that came out of the camera. I'll be in, getting dynoed. That one's kind of interesting and cool. But anyway, guys, remember I'm no Superman. You guys take care.